Hello and welcome. Director and producer John Landis believes his 1981 horror film, American Werewolf in London, was his masterpiece. Now, that's quite a call, considering his outstanding directing career that's included such hits as National Lampoon's Animal House and blockbusters like The Blues Brothers, Trading Places, Spies Like Us, Three Amigos, and in 1988, Coming to America, not to mention directing the multi-award winning Michael Jackson music videos Thriller and Black or White. Well, it's certainly been a stellar career that in later years embraced creating and producing a range of documentaries and TV series. But back in 1981, American Werewolf was just his fourth feature film and followed fairly quickly on the heels of the Blues Brothers and Animal House. The film caused quite a stir at the Cannes Film Festival where I caught up with the then 31-year-old and spoke to him about the movie and some of its more memorable scenes. John, you obviously have a very serious approach to life. Uh, if one looks at your films like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Animal House, The Blues Brothers, why, why so serious? Weltschmerz. 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 World view, negative world view. Thomas Mann, one of the major influences in my life. And uh, I've always found the German expressionist cinema. What are you talking about? What do you want from me? <laughs> Ask me a serious question. That was serious. My world view? No, no, no. Just your own view of life, generally. I mean, reflected in your movies, like Animal House, serious, introspective stuff. In fact, Animal House is a very serious movie. It happens to be terribly funny because it's a comedy. <coughs> but uh, any film cannot help but be political by its nature. You know, I'm not. I'm. I'm really. I really. I've been in Cannes now <laughs> for two days, talking to French and Italian, very serious film people and they keep wanting me to make pronouncements about art and film and forget it. I make movies. Right. You know, I'm not... Uh... Well, the latest one that you've made is called American Werewolf in London. How ever did you uh, get on to making a movie about werewolves? Well, that, in fact, that's a point. That is, American Werewolf in London is a horror film. It's not like the other one's a comedy. It is very funny, but it's not a comedy. It is a definitely a scary picture. Um, and it t took me quite a long time to get it made because it's so bloody silly. It, uh, Eleven years, in fact. Eleven years, in fact. It was written uh, in 1969 when I was a flunky on a picture, Gopher, Schlepper. They're called production assistants now, but it was Schlepper. On a picture called Kelly's Heroes in Yugoslavia. Um, and it starred uh, Donald Sutherland <laughs> and Clint Eastwood and Kelly Cephalus and the Yugoslav Army. Big picture. And I was being driven from Belgrade to Novi Sad and it's one straight road. We're driving along, a Yugoslav driver, and we came to an obstruction and we stopped. And after about 20 minutes, it's what the hell's going on? I go out to watch, and there were about 50 people, like dress extras. I mean, they were, they were gypsies, and they looked like they stepped out of a 40s universal picture, you know. And it was a priest and a shroud uh, body in a burlap sack that was draped with rosaries and garlic. And I thought, what? what? And there was a hole right in the middle of the road. They were digging a hole right in the crux of the crossroads. And they were burying this guy there. And I said, why are they burying this guy in the middle of the street? And it turned out, in fact, that he was a rapist. Um, the driver, the Yugoslav driver, well, told me he was very, the driver found it terribly funny and said, uh, these peasants, these gypsies, they're crazy. And they were burying him in the crossroads so he would not get up and cause trouble. And I was fascinated because they absolutely believed it. I mean, they weren't kidding. And I thought, gee, my driver's just, you know, scoffing, and I'm going, what? And what would happen if, you know, he got up? How would we deal with it? And so I pursued that because what I wanted to do was uh, make a film, a contemporary horror picture, take something that's basically ridiculous, take a premise that is absurd, and make it absolutely real. And I hit upon werewolves because they have no religious connotation, really. I mean, vampires are overtly sexual and Christian. Um, why are you laughing? Because of that? <laughs> no, no, no. It's my backup group. Whenever I do interviews, I bring the frogs. And they, um, what do you want to know? No, so that's, that's, and then what happened was, the reason it took 11 years is because the movie is so strange. It is very funny. Was it originally an American werewolf in London or in, in England? London, always. Oh. American werewolf in London. Right. And uh, it was always that, and it was always strange. It's a very odd script because it's very realistic. And because it's very realistic, it's terribly funny. Um, how can I explain that to you? Right now, sitting here. John, there are some amazing special effects in the film. 
Uh, one of them includes the scene where his hand actually grows on screen, which seems quite extraordinary. Can you tell us any, how you did it? Can you give your secret away? Um, Rick Baker, who was brilliant. Again, I wanted the movie to be completely real and to take something as ridiculous as a werewolf and make it acceptable. Our werewolf is not a guy with a hairy face, it's this four-footed hound. <laughs> um, to see him metamorphosize, to transform from a human into this, I wanted it all on camera and no opticals, no, you know, lap dissolves, it's all there. And so Rick Baker developed extraordinary things and you saw a little piece of it with the hand, but that goes on. I mean, the whole body, the skull, is, it's incredible. Uh, what about the actual beast itself? I mean, is that mechanical? No, it's not mechanical, and it's not a man in a suit, and it's not, it's, it's not a simple puppet, it's not, it's new. It, it's a dog with makeup. In fact, we tried to build a suit for a dog, but it looked too ridiculous, it looked silly, <laughs> and so uh, we rejected that. He couldn't take it seriously, I guess. Well, dogs just have difficulty wearing suits, actually, like me. <laughs> One of the big scenes in the film, of course, was shot in Piccadilly Circus, I believe, in the middle of the night. Are there any problems doing that? Well, sure, because it was shot on a Monday morning between 1 and 4 and a Tuesday morning between 1 and 4. Um, that was quite extraordinary. How did, you, how did you manage to pull it all together? Can you tell us a little well, about movies, it? movies, when you make a movie, I think Bogdanovich or somebody pretentious said that movies are pieces of time, which they are. They're just isolated moments. And as you know, visiting movie sets, essentially, people go, well, this is boring because you're just getting pieces. When you cut the pieces together, they become very spectacular and violent. Uh, the Blues Brothers and Animal House and the Werewolf, in fact, all have scenes of tremendous urban chaos. And to orchestrate those, you have to make deals with the police. You can't, you can't obstruct traffic. You know, uh, it's uh, quite spectacular sequence, and it was done carefully. <laughs> Didn't anybody react to it in the in the street? I mean, Not there must have been people, people in Piccadilly Circus at four in the morning, other than junkies. You know, and uh, I'm sure they didn't notice. But. Um, no, we had our own extras. We brought hundreds of people who worked for us. Sure, people. I mean, the most, the most wonderful story that people were reacting is that on the Blues Brothers. Uh, if you recall in the film, the Nazis are chasing Jake and Elwood, and their car goes off a freeway ramp, and then it falls. Tremendous distance. In fact, 1,400 feet, 140 stories. We dropped it from a helicopter. It's real. We dropped this car from a helicopter. And uh, in Chicago, right on Lake Michigan, on the Chicago River, Lakeshore Drive, are these two beautiful big buildings, like 80 stories, called the Marina Towers, very exclusive and expensive condominium. We shot that early, early Sunday morning. And one of my favorite just things is that uh, helicopter and all this stuff. The police received over 50 phone calls from people in the Marina Towers saying, excuse me, but I live on the 51st floor of the Marina Towers, and I think a car just went by my window, you know, <laughs> having breakfast sort of area. You know. <laughs> Were there any similar uh, reactions at all on Werewolf? Well, Werewolf we had in Piccadilly, a wonderful, uh, there's a rather gruesome sequence, uh, uh, police officers to on uh, Shaftesbury Avenue, and we shot that on Shaftesbury Avenue, and, and since we made deals that we wouldn't obstruct traffic, we're timing with the traffic lights, you know. And we have this head that's bouncing onto the bonnet of a car and into the street, and it's really quite gruesome. And uh, the light changed, so these traffic's coming. And my car, I mean, my bobbies, and running out in the street, stop the car, pick up this bloody head, okay, go ahead, these people are, you know, driving away. <laughs> I wonder what they thought. I mean, they just sort of drove away with this. I wonder well, we why they didn't read about it in the papers the next day. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing American Werewolf in London. It looks like it was a lot of fun for a very serious kind of story. I John, hope so. John Landis, thanks very much. Thank you. John turns 73 this year and is still hard at work on various projects, including television commercials, and as a guest filmmaker scholar, on behalf of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, he's also lectured at many US film schools and universities, including Yale, Harvard, NYU and UCLA.